Hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We have a very interesting game here today with Hadrian's Wall. This is a flip and right, and it took the world by storm because it is a very different kind of flipping right from what most of the flip and right genre or roll and right genre or blank and right genre is. This is a very meaty game with a lot going on, a lot of very satisfying chaining and combo things that can happen and it's very very cool the solo mode has been quite renowned for what it is i really do like it i do not own this copy this copy is my friend zach's copy who is letting me go through a few of his sheets here to put this on the channel which i very much appreciate and as a solo game it is quite the enjoyable very satisfying puzzle do not know how much replayability this would have for me once you kind of figure out the various paths that you want to go forward with to have a successful game. I will play the same on the hardest mode and a ultimate winning score is like 70. So it's not totally beat your own score-ish. There is definitely a certain number that you want to get to. If you're playing as a solo game, you want basically more than 70 to be Lagatus Legionis. If you get 60 to 69, you are Perfectus Castronrum. And then if you are less than that, well, you're just not, you know, having a very good game. So <laughs> we're going to shoot for 70 today on the hardest difficulty. I definitely have the pattern that I like to go forward with as I play this game. And I do not vary from that too much, very much. I will be hunting for income producing things the first few rounds and then try to get all my points later. That's pretty standard with a lot of games that have like an engine building component. You want to get that engine going and then you could do more later. There are certain strategies that I will pretty much altogether ignore. There's a gladiator strategy. I just don't find that workable. The temples don't find that workable, at least not in a solo game. I have played this game quite a bit in competitive games. This is the most solo competitive game you will ever play. There is very little interaction. Everyone's kind of working on their own sheets. And you're just hoping people are making a minimum number of mistakes because no one's really watching anybody and mistakes are bound to happen in a game with this many little things happening. I want to say it's a little fiddly, but I mean, all games are fiddly, I guess, on some level. What this game does, again, it works. You're turning this resource into that resource which allows you to get this resource and then do that resource. And it's just super cool. I'll be using this number two pencil. I'll probably erase something at least once as I change my mind, but I will try to keep that to a minimum for the sake of the video, especially. And you'll see these little white boxes get filled in more and more and more. I'm not sure it makes sense to try to do an overall teach. I pretty much just want to jump right in. So let's do that. I'm going to move the box over here. We have our iconography cheat sheet on the back of the rule book. I love how many rule books do this. It really drives me nuts when rule books don't do this. Take advantage of the back of your rule book and give me something that has all the icons for quick reference. Thank you very much. This is our barbarian card deck or our attack deck or whatever it is. It also will give us our starting resources for every round. So this is a very important deck. There are 48 cards in this deck, 16 each for the three different directions. By three different directions, I mean left, right, or center. You are hoping, the, the way I play, I'm hoping that there is some level of balance in the deck and how the cards come out because if you get five cards to any one direction at any one time, it can be really rough. If you want to play this game on a whole other level, especially on hard mode when you see a lot of the cards in this deck, you can start tracking how many cards are left of what side. But again, the way math works out, leaning too much into that might still screw you in any one game so it's probably not worth the effort at least not you know for the way i want to play this game and the enjoyment i get out of it so still shuffling up this deck we'll give it one more riffle make sure it's nice and ready to go and we'll put this over here this is going to be for a dummy player the dummy player we're just going to put two cards up during every turn and that's going to give us options for a scouts which is a mechanic down here with the patricians. And then it's going to give us options for trading if we want to go to the market. If that doesn't make sense to you now, that's fine. I'll explain it as we go. But if you use something from one of these dummy player cards, the resource that you would spend to do it in a normal competitive game, well, now you're putting that resource on the card and that's going to make you pull one more barbarian card at the end of the year. So it's not something I will be doing often. 
we will see. I'm almost guaranteed not to do much with the market up here. I might do something with the scouts. It might end up having an extra barbarian card or two by the end of this game. These yellow cards are just for the dummy player. We'll put them over here. The 12 red cards are exactly the same as the 12 yellow cards. There are other colors in the box, obviously. I clearly had to choose a dude with the beard. And, you know, that's fine. <laughs> and he has a lion hugging him from the back. And how awesome is that? Hopefully the lion doesn't chomp down and bite his head off because then I'll be running around as a decapitated little Roman gladiator here. And that's not good for anybody. So I'm going to put this down here and I think we're good to go. So for the first round, what I'm going to do is pull off two of these cards. So I have the option of Vanguard where I get points at the end of the game for completed wall guard sections or of the option for Forager, where I get points at the end of the game for the amount of resource production I'm going to have. So again, I'm going to explain this as I go. Completed wall guard sections. This is the wall guard. This is basically broken into three sections. So if I have all of these boxes from here to here filled in by the end of the game, I would get one victory point. If I have all the boxes here from here to here filled in, I get two victory points. And if I have all the boxes in filled away all across this page, I would get three victory points. Resource production refers to this. At the beginning of the game, I have one black circle filled in, which means I have one resource production. If I get up to three resource production by the end of the game, I get one victory point. If I get up to nine, I get three. I will very heavily be leaning into a resource production strategy. So this is kind of more of a safe thing for me. I will probably be doing the wall guard as well, but not as guaranteed. So I'm going to take the resource production card and I'm going to put this here. So this is year one. This game is played out over six years. At the end of this year, I'm going to have one barbarian attack me. You'll see a few different flags up here. And I know it's really, really small. So I'll try to explain it as much as I can. The red flag is how many valor points you would get if you successfully defend the city from barbarian attacks. The green flag is how many barbarian attack cards you pull if you're playing on easy difficulty. The yellow flag has how many barbarian cards you pull if you're playing on medium difficulty. And the red flag is how many barbarian cards you pull if you're playing on hard difficulty. For the first year, the number in the green, the yellow, and the red flags is always one. So we'll only be pulling one barbarian flag at the end of this round. Now, if we can't defend against the barbarian, we take something called the stain. And yes, as you know by now, I'll explain that as we go. So we're going to put Forager up there. And then we're going to leave the Vanguard card here. And that's going to give me options to a couple of things. One, it's going to give me these two things as starting resources. So that'll be nice when I take all my starting resources. In addition, I'm going to take a blue meeple, which is a builder, and a yellow meeple, which is a civilian. I'm going to now flip over two cards from the dummy player deck. So this is the engineer, and this is the aristocrat card. I don't care about anything on these cards other than two things. One are going to be these symbols here, which is the scouts, like I mentioned before. Two are going to be these things here, which are things I could trade for. They are number one and number two. If I went into a trading strategy, I could only trade for things of different numbers over the course of the game. So the one and the two being different would be nice. But again, when you go to the market to do a trade, you have to spend a stone. So I put that on the card, which means that if I do a trade in the first year, I'm gonna actually be pulling two barbarian cards instead of one. That's scary. Or if I had two stones, I could trade with both of these guys and take a one and a two, which would give me some renown for the civilization I'm developing here, but I would have to pull three barbarian cards, which is just a super bad idea. Again, I find the market strategy a little bit hard to pull off in a solo game. It's not something I will be doing, but I will potentially do a scout, probably not the first year, but looking at those shapes, if I were to take one of those scouts, I would basically be playing a little game of Tetris over here and I would fill in some boxes. If I fill in some boxes, it could get me some resources, which could be very, very strong. But again, that's probably going to be for later years and we'll see that play out. So I'm going to take this top barbarian card, flip it over. That's going to give me resources. So I ignore the top part of this. And now we look at what resources I'm getting. So I'm going to get two of these black meeples. They represent soldiers. We get one blue meeple, which again is a builder. I'm going to get two purple meeples, which are servants, two yellow meeples, which are civilians, and one stone. If I look at my Vanguard card, I get my blue meeple and my yellow meeple. And then I'm looking at my little sheet here. I'm also going to get one stone because my resource production is at a one to start the game. So those are my resources going into the first round. Now, how do I want to spend them? Civilian meeples are generally going to be used on this page. 
These are the various civilian tracks you can go up. You have traders, performers, priests, apparitors, or apparitores, or whatever they are, and patricians. Generally speaking, going up the trader route will really help you get some renown. Doing the performer track can get you various things, depends on how many performances you do in the theater. Going up the priest track will get you some piety. Going up the apparitores track, well, that's really going to help make you deal with some of your disdain. Basically, you're bribing people to forget how bad you were at defending the city. And the patrician track will really give you a lot of valor. The discipline track you can get from multiple angles. A lot of that's going to just come as you're building up your fort and then build up your wall guard. Here are the different things that you're going to be developing from top to bottom. We have mining and foresting that is mostly developed by using your servants. The wall guard is mostly developed by using your soldiers. However, once a year, you can take a builder and have them work on the wall guard. You have the sipe, which is mostly developed using stone. You have the wall, which is mostly developed using stone. And then we have the fort, which is developed using either builders or your soldiers. Here are different buildings you can develop. The tracks that you care most about are really the renown, the piety, the valor, and the discipline tracks. These comprise the base of your score. There are other points you can get from the path cards as we discussed, but really getting as many of these things filled in all the way left to right on all four of these tracks are how you're going to be able to score 70 plus points. The only thing that offsets what you score there is how much disdain you get because the amount of disdain you have will trigger a certain amount of negative points at the end of the game. So it's going to be the score from these four tracks plus the score from your path cards minus your final disdain tally. And then that's going to be your total score. All right, so I've yammered enough. What do I want to do to start this game? Well, I'm going to want to try to get some research production, and I'm also going to want to develop a small hotel. That would make me super happy if I can pull that off. So what am I going to need to make that happen? I'm going to take one of these builders, and I'm going to fill in the first part of my fort. Now I'm at a level one on my fort, which means I can start developing everything north of it. I cannot develop either the sippy or the wall to the point that they would go beyond where the fort is. So having a strong base on my fort will allow me to do really cool things with the stones above it. I'm now going to spend one stone to fill in this part of the wall because that is above a base of the fort that I have developed, which is going to give me a yellow because that was what was pictured in that box. I'm going to use this yellow and spend that to start going up the performer track and that's going to give me a blue and then i'm going to use this blue the builder to build another part of my fort i'm going to use one of my soldiers to develop another part of my fort which now gives me level two which means that i have reached a level high enough that i can build my small hotel before i build my small hotel however i'm going to spend one of my, I'm going to spend a civilian to fill in the first trader thing up here. And that's trader with a D, not A-I-T-O-R, very different. And that's going to give me a servant. I'm going to spend two of my servants to fill in the mining and production boxes up here. Now, there are two rewards here. It is very important to go very methodically in playing this game. At least I found it that way. So the first thing I filled in in that big, long rectangle is going to give me an extra resource production for the next year. The second thing I'm going to fill in is a symbol to give me another stone. I'm going to spend a servant and a builder and a stone to develop my small hotel. That immediately is going to give me access to another civilian at the beginning of every year. Additionally, at the time I build it, I can fill in this box and it gives me another civilian. So I'm sitting here with three civilians, one stone, and a soldier at this point. I'm going to spend the soldier to fill in this up here, and that's going to give me a defense on one of my three cohorts. You have left cohort, right cohort, and in between them is the center cohort. I'm going to decide which of these three I want to develop. I'm just going to go center because I always go center. And, you know, we'll see how that works out for me. At this point, there's only one Barbarian card coming my way this turn. It is a bit of a guess. I'm hoping that I pull off one of the 16 center cards as opposed to one of the 16 left cards or one of the 15 remaining right cards. With my three civilians, let me see what makes the most sense here. I'm going to spend one civilian to get the first level of the priests, which gives me a servant. I'm going to spend two civilians to get the next two levels of the traders. One and two, the third level gives me a builder. 
I'm going to use this builder to develop my fort another level, which gives me another civilian. And now that I'm at level three for traders, I'm going to spend the civilian and the servant to develop my small precinct. Again, this has a three. I have to be at level three before I can build this. I got there and now I get one piety. So I'm going to get my first point down here. I'm going to get another resource production. And I'm going to get another stone. So I'm stuck with only stone at this point. So I'm going to spend one stone to get another level of the wall. Now I can keep developing the wall, even if I don't do the sippy. The sippy is really great late game, not as great early game. And now I'm going to spend another stone to get me a civilian, because that's what was in that third box there. With my final civilian, I'm going to get the first level of the patricians, which gives me a stone. And then I'm going to use that stone to develop the wall. I'm going to get the first level of renown or the first point on renown. And then I'm also going to get a cohort and I'm going to put this on the left and play the odds and hope that I get my 32 out of 47 chance to actually be able to successfully defend the city, which will give me a valor. So let's see, that is the end of my round. You have to use all your resources. You cannot carry anything over. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's how it works. So we are done. I'm going to take this Vanguard card. It just comes out of play. I'm going to take these two cards from the dummy player deck and we're going to put those out of play. And we're going to take this card and put this out of play. And now we're doing the Barbarian Attack. We're pulling one card on the hardest difficulty. Bleed anything but right. It's center. Woo! We are defended. So since we're defended and since none of the Barbarians got through, we get the point total that is in the gray flag. That gives me one Valor. Now we go to year two. So I pull two more cards off. So we have aristocrat and we have architect. The aristocrat's gonna give me points based on having a low amount of final disdain. I cannot guarantee that's gonna happen, but I'm intrigued. The architect's gonna give me points for having constructed landmarks. I think I'm gonna have at least two constructed landmarks. If I get three, I'll get three victory points. So I'm gonna put this up here. Plus the architect card gives me stone. I don't really need a ton of stone because I already have stone production of a three. So that makes me feel good. I think I'd rather have some of the meeples. So I'm putting the architect card there. At the end of this round, we are pulling three barbarian cards and it could be four or five if we take any resources from our friend, the dummy player over here. The dummy player cards are the forager and the vanguard. And again, we see we have a possible trade of a three, a possible trade of a two. And then those are the two scout pieces that are available to me. I'm gonna pull over the next card of the barbarian deck. It's another right card. I'll keep a loose track of that. We're gonna get two soldiers. We're gonna get three builders. We're gonna get one servant, one civilian, and one stone. In addition, because of my aristocrat card, I get one builder and one civilian. And then I do production from my board. I get three more stone. And then additionally, because I have the small hotel built, per year I get another civilian. All right, I'm gonna spend one of my builders to build out another level of my fort. I'm gonna use another builder to take advantage of this training ground opportunity. So in year two, you can only do this five times over the course of the game. I'm gonna use one of those available swords, a sword links to the wall guard, and that's gonna give me another level of my wall guard, which is going to allow me to take a discipline because you had that helmet symbol there. Soldiers are harder to come by than the builder, so I do find it important to use that all five times in a game if you can. Nothing's set in stone in this game. You have to be a little bit flexible. So looking over on the civilian side of things, if I wanted to build that medium precinct, I have to get up to level three of the traders first, so that's a little bit far away. I could try to develop the theater. It's a little bit resource intensive, but might make some sense, and I could do some performances. And you can only do one performance a year. Small gardens can be huge. And I think that's going to make the most sense of what I want to do. I also want to make sure I build the small workshop. So let me get that done. We're at level three. I can build the small workshop. I'm going to spend three stone. So I have the small workshop, which means I'm going to get another builder every year. Plus I get an immediate builder. Now I started with a lot of stone this round with this production, but I've already gone through a fair amount of it. I'm going to spend a civilian to get to the level two of the priests. I'm going to spend another civilian to get to level three of the priests. That gives me a servant. I'm going to spend another civilian to get to level four of the priests. That gets me a piety. 
I'm going to spend a priest, a builder, and my final stone to do my small gardens. That gives me another piety. The third piety level gets me a servant back. That gets me another level of the traders. That gives me the level four. That gets me another level for the performers. That gives me the level two. And it gets me another level of the priest themselves. That gives me another servant. The small gardens and large gardens are huge. <laughs> They're very, very important. I'm going to spend one of my soldiers to get another cohort defense. And let's play the math a little bit. We've seen two right cards. We've seen one center card. I'm going to actually beef up the left. I'm going to spend my three servants to do the mining and production. So one, two, the third one gives me a production value and a stone. I'm going to use the stone on the wall to get a civilian. I'm going to use a builder on the fort to get a civilian. I got to be careful and I don't get too many more builders because I can't do much with them. I cannot go beyond that line until I build a medium granary and I don't have any more stone. I don't think I have good access to more stone. So that's something to keep in mind. Actually, I can make this work. Let me do this. I'm going to spend this civilian to get level five of the traders, which gives me a stone. I'm going to spend this civilian to get the level three of the performers, which gives me a servant. I'm going to spend the servant, the builder, and the stone to just do the medium granary this turn. So I don't have to worry about it next turn. I can do that as long as I'm at level one there, which I am. And now I can actually continue to develop my wall. So it's something I wanted to do anyway. I'll just do it this turn instead of next. I don't have many other great ideas of things I want to do. And then I'll spend this soldier to develop the fort. Okay, you can spend a soldier or a builder there. And that would give me another level of discipline. So we have one entire fort section done. So that's fort. That's not wall and it's not wall guard. It's just the fort. That is the end of my round. I have a feeling we'll probably take a disdain at this point. Hopefully it doesn't come out right, right, right. But I'm going to put this over here. We're going to put the dummy cards over there. This can come out of play. And now we're going to pull three cards. What is it? Oh, of course, it's right. It's center. And it's left. One of each. So I block two. One got through. The one that gets through causes me a disdain. Now, how many points would I have gotten had I blocked everything? I would have gotten two. I could take that number, subtract the number of disdain I got, and I still get that many points of valor. So I will still get one point in valor. Had I gotten two points in valor, I would have been able to get that black meeple, and I would have started the next round with that as well. So again, one of the things like paying attention to the symbols, had I just like made this balanced, <laughs> I would have been able to successfully defend. So again, always playing the math when you have 48 cards isn't always the smartest idea. We're now going to go to year three. I'm going to have to choose between the large buildings or the collected goods. I'm definitely not collecting goods. We're going to have to do the large buildings. So the large buildings, I can get up to six of them. If I get two, I get a victory point. If I get four, I get two victory points. If I get six, I get a victory point. The large buildings include the large hotel, the large workshop, the large road, the large precinct, the large gardens, and the large temple. I will probably get four of those. As long as I get two, we still get a point. Merchant card will go here. And now we have the ranger and the fighter card from the dummy player. They will just chill there. Again, probably not trading. Might start doing some scouting. We'll see if I have a captain thing lying around. I would also need to get my patricians up to at least level two before I can scout at least once. So we're going to take the next barbarian card off the top. So that would be a center card. So the deck is most rich in left. And that's going to give me my starting resources of two soldiers, two builders, three servants, a civilian. From this card, I get another civilian and a stone. I get four stone production from my board. I get one civilian from my board and I get one more builder from my board. Go to year three. I'm going to spend this builder immediately to do this training thing before I forget. Year three, that gives me one on the wall guard. And then I'll spend a soldier to fill in this, which gives me a discipline, which gives me a blue guy right back. 
I'm going to spend one civilian to get level six of the traders. And that's going to allow me to spend two civilians and a servant to get the medium precinct. That's immediately going to give me a discipline. It's going to give me a production. So I'm at five of nine. And it's going to give me a stone. I'm going to spend a builder to get over here on the fort. That's going to give me a civilian. I'm going to spend another builder to get to level four of the fort. And since I'm at level four now, which I, again, I could build into there because I did the medium granary last turn. I'm going to spend two servants, a builder and a stone. And now I have the small road. Immediately, I can take a piety or a discipline. I'm going to take a discipline. And every year from here on out, during income, I can fill in a line on any chart. I like running up the discipline chart. I find it the easiest to do in a solo game the way I play. And then once I can start building some of these landmarks, it'd be pretty cool. Tempted to do this scout thing. The performers are kind of wasted some resources there because I haven't done much here. The priest, I can do the large gardens next turn, almost guaranteed. Haven't developed my wall at all. And we're having five cards come our way, which is a wee bit concerning. Kind of wish I had access to a purple, which I don't. Oh, I can get a purple that way, oh, but then I'm not going to have a black. I think I'm taking some disdain. All right, I can do some cool things here, I think. Oh, that would give me a blue. I think I just focus on my cohorts right now. Yeah, I'm going to spend this civilian to get to level two of the patricians. I'm going to spend this soldier to do a scout action you're gonna need to be at level two to the first one level four for the second five for the third seven for the fourth and then nine for the fifth now all these shapes are four remember this is a four times five grid so you need five pieces and find a way that they fit tetra style i spent that black to do the scout i'm going to use my own because i do not want to pull any extra barbarian cards so i'm going to fill four boxes that match the shape that's on my card. Again, the Tetra shape on my card. When I covered those boxes, I get both a stone and a servant. Now I'm gonna use the stone like crazy. Really don't have much else going on. I can't do the large workshop because I'm not at level seven. I do hope to get the large hotel next turn. So that's gonna give me some focus there. Let me not take this extra stone because it's wasted. So I'm gonna actually change where I put this shape and I'm just gonna put it here instead. All I did was take the servant because I don't want to waste that stone. Okay. You don't use it, you lose it. I'm going to spend these five stones to develop both the wall and the sippy. So one, two, three, four, and five are both going to give me a cohort. I'm going to add one cohort to the left. It gives me a discipline, which gives me a blue. And one cohort to the center and just leaving my right very vulnerable. I'm going to spend this builder to get another level of my fort, which gives me a yellow. I'm going to spend this yellow to do another level of patricians, which gives me a soldier. I'm going to spend this soldier to do a level of the wall guard, which gives me another cohort. I'll take one on the right now and I'll spend this servant to do a level of mining, which will get me closer to getting an extra resource production next turn. Remember, there's three more levels of resource production there. There's one for the large precinct. That would get me up to the max of nine. That's the end of my round. I'm going to put this merchant card over here. The dummy player cards go over here. The resource card will go here. And now we're pulling five cards because we're in year three. So I'm going to put the three to the left, two to the center, and one to the right. Five cards, one to the left, two to the left, three to the left. Wow. One to the right. Go center for me. Oh, four to the left. <laughs> so bad. All right. Well, we only get one disdain out of that, which could have been worse. So we got one disdain that got through. There's two possible points that does give me one valor, which is enough to give me a soldier for use next turn. So that pretty much even things out. That's four left, four right, and three center of cards that we've seen. So everything's pretty much even in that deck for the rest of the game. So it's probably not worth trying to track. We're going to be seeing so many cards every round. We go to year four. Now remember this soldier I got from the Valor track and stay with me. I can now do completed citizens tracks or completed cohorts. Both are attractive to me. 
I have a decent chance of doing this cohort thing. The citizen track I'm probably more likely to do. I think it comes down to what resources do I want? I kind of want the purple and the yellow meeple. So I'm gonna actually put the cohorts up here. One fully completed cohort up here. I get one victory point, two I get two, three I get three. So these are two cards I wish were separate because they are both cards I would have probably grabbed. That shape isn't great though. Uh, that shape's also not great. So neither one of them are good cards for me for scouting purposes. So I might be taking one from my friend over here. Dummy player, dummy player shapes I like a little bit more. So we'll see. And now we get our starting resources. It's two soldiers, two builders, one servant, one civilian, two stone. I get a servant and a civilian for my own card. I get a civilian, a builder, five stone, and a jump up any track I want. I do want to keep riding up this discipline track. And again, I got that because of the small road. Let's do the training attempt before I forget. So this is year four. We get something on our wall guard. I'm going to spend a civilian to get to level six for the priests, which gives me a piety. I'm going to spend a civilian to get to level seven for the priests, which gives me a servant. I'm going to spend a servant, a builder, and two stone to build the large gardens. That gives me a piety. That gives me a trader level me level seven which gives me a builder that gives me a performer level gets me at the level four that gets me another priest level gets me at the level eight which gives me a piety which gives me a servant and we get an apertores level level one gives me a builder and a diplomat level or patrician level which gives me a renown see how that all combos very nicely I'm going to spend a stone to get another level of my wall, which gives me another renown, which gives me a civilian. We are pulling seven cards this round. Definitely not ready for that. Do want to really make sure I'm focusing on income. I'm at level four, so I'm going to do a scout. I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to put this shape down here. That gives me two more stone. To do the large hotel, I need those two things to do the large workshop i need those four things don't know if i'll be able to do all of it but i'm gonna try i think so i'm gonna spend a builder to get another level of my fort i'm gonna spend another builder to get another level of my fort that gives me a civilian i'm gonna spend a soldier to get another level of my fort that gets me up to six i'm gonna spend a builder a servant and two stone to get the large hotel that gives me another level of renown and it gives me a civilian. So I got it the large granary before I do the large workshop. That's going to be tough. I'm going to spend this civilian to get to level five of the performers, which gives me a soldier. I'm going to spend this soldier to get this level of the fort, which gives me a discipline. And a cohort. I'm going to put this in the center, which gives me another discipline, which gives me a builder. I'm going to send a servant, this builder, and this two stone to get the large granary, which gives me a renown. Let's see if I can't find a way to get two more stone. We can spend this civilian to get level nine of the priest, which gives me a servant. I'm going to spend these two servants to get two more levels of mining and production. That gives me a production circle and another stone. I'm going to spend this civilian to get level six of the patricians, which is me a stone. I have to be at level seven before I do the large workshop. So now I'm going to spend this soldier to get to level seven. And then these four stone to get the large workshop which gives me another renown. That extra renown gives me another civilian. And I'm also gonna get a blue worker. I'm gonna spend the blue worker to get 
another level of the fort, which gives me another civilian. So here I am with three civilians. So many civilians, kids. Did not do much to develop my wall, but that was kind of a conscious decision. Might be able to make up for that later. Level eight next turn would get me the large road, which would be really nice income with moving up tracks. Pulling seven cards, I'm a three, three, one, so I would need to get super lucky. <laughs> Don't like my odds there. Doing a performance or two next year could be good. The large precinct is going to be a no brainer. So let me do this. I'm going to spend a civilian to get another level of the traders, which gives me a renown. I'm going to spend a civilian to get a stone. I'm going to spend this stone to develop the wall, which gives me a civilian. Getting the baths ready for some bribing could be a smart idea. I'm already at level five, so I could do a third scout next round, which would be great. And I could do the first two levels of the diplomat thing as well. Mm, yeah, I think the apparatores are winning me over. So I'm going to spend two civilians, develop two levels of the apparatores, or apparatores, and we're going to get a soldier. I'm going to use this soldier to get another level on the wall guard, which gives me a discipline. Definitely taking some disdain. We'll see if I can't make some bribes to get rid of it because we're pulling eight cards. I did take something from the dummy player and I only have seven levels developed on my wall. I did sacrifice some things to get both the large hotel and the large workshop this turn. And I'm probably going for the large road next turn. We also got some more stone production as well. The extra stones will be helpful with the baths. So notice I have circled two disdains. When you do bribes, you can basically fill those circles in and then the disdain level that just goes away acts like it never happened. So let's put this over here and see how punished I get with disdain. Do need to get a bit lucky. We're pulling eight cards because of that resource. So it's the one plus the seven. So eight cards, what do we get? Center, center, center. <laughs> that maxes out my center cohort. Right, Max is on my right cohort. Oh, let me put this down so it's on the video. Sorry about that. Sorry if that happened in the previous years. Right, so that's one disdain. Center, that's two disdain. We got two more cards. Center, that's three disdain. And go left. Thank you. All right, we're good there. So we only got three disdain. I say only. Could have been way worse. So if it ended now, that's negative nine points. And since we got three disdain, the max points up for grabs was three. I get squad douche to help me out here but there are also things to do that can try to prevent the stain in future rounds so now that i have my engine where i want it those are things i'm going to be looking into for sure the total gladiator strength is a non-starter completed scout columns these scout columns are here so that's something i will look into for sure so let me put this here we're pulling nine cards this round potentially 10 or 11 if i take anything from the dummy player. Uh, I probably will have to because this shape is not going to do me any favors. I was definitely looking for the long L's. The scout column shape is better for me, but I really just could not afford to take that because gladiator strength is going to be a big fat zero for me. So completed wall section gives me a long L, which is probably going to seal the deal and then filled temples. Great. So defender and pontiff for the dummy player. We're going to pull the starting resources. We get one soldier. We get two builders, we get two servants, we get one civilian, we get two stone, I get another servant and a stone from here, my trainer card, and then we're going to get two civilians because of the large and small hotel. We're gonna get two builders because of the large and small workshop, and I can fill in a thing. I'm gonna fill in the discipline. Starting year five, we're going to do this another part of my wall guard which gives me one to my cohort let me get one to the right i'm going to use a builder to get to level eight i'm going to use these two stone this builder and these two servants to get the large road I'm immediately going to take a renown or a valor renown is definitely better for me i'm going to spend two civilians on the patricians First one gives me a renown, which gives me another civilian back. Second one gives me a soldier. Put this soldier over here. It gives me an L. Put this down here. It gives me a stone. 
And since I completed two rows over here, I haven't done anything with the scout columns yet. I'm hopefully I can fill those out in the final round, but that does give me two valor because I did complete two rows. One and two. Now I'm going to spend a servant, a soldier, and two stone to get diplomat one. So that gives me a valor immediately. That a valor is going to give me a soldier. And that's going to give me two potential favors. Now when you get a diplomat, you have to choose whether you're doing cohort left, cohort right, or cohort center. I'm going to have this diplomat serve the left so I can ignore two barbarian cards that come to the left. Just, they don't exist at all. Remember, we're pulling 10 cards because I did... Put a resource on the dummy player card over here. I'm going to get a little lucky to fill this thing out. I think I have a small chance. Oh, that was a scout too, so I have to fill this in. I'm low on stone. Oh no. And my stone went quick. Stone went quick. I'm going to spend a civilian to get level four of the Apertors, which gives me a discipline. The discipline gives me a builder. I'm going to spend this builder to develop the fort. Gives me a civilian. So it looks like I'm going to be capped out of six resource production there. Cohorts are in bad shape. I am stuck. I'm going to have to get lucky. Going to have to get real lucky. Yeah, I'm like one away from getting this large precinct, which is kind of a solid game changer. You could always trade two for one, but you can't trade for a black. So this could give me another one, but that's still leaving me short. I still think the diplomat was the right call. The scouting shapes haven't really been great for what I needed to try to fill the whole thing. So that's kind of jamming me up a little bit. And I'm just short on getting the exact bonuses I need everywhere else. Let's fill out my cohort a little bit more. I'm going to have a bunch of blues with not much to do with them next turn. That's my only concern. If I build a courthouse, I could turn one blue into two golds. I'm going to want the blues for the landmark. So that actually might work. So I'm going to spend two civilians to get two more levels of the Apertors. I'm going to get a blue and I get a discipline. I'm going to do these two blues and the soldier. So the two builders of the soldier. One, two, I'm going to get a civilian. Three, I get another discipline. And then four, I get a cohort. I don't want to do right because that's going to give me a discipline and a blue, which I don't want. I'll just do center. And then with the civilian, I'll just fill this in here and get a soldier. And with that soldier, I can go ahead and develop the wall guard. All right. We're pulling 10. I don't love it. Something went awry, kids. <laughs> pulling 12 next turn, too, which is super fun. So pulling 10, 9 plus the 1 for the resource I took. So 1 center, I'm defended 4 there. 2 center, I'm defended 4 there. 3 center, I'm defended 4 there. 1 left, I'm defended 3, but plus I have the 2 diplomats. 1 right, I'm only defended 2, so that's worst case scenario. My center cohort's used up. Let me get the dummy cards out of here. And I'm pulling 4 more. So please go left. Great. Please go left again. Right, that's fine. So haven't had anything come through yet. I'm pulling two more. Right, that's a problem. And next, left, we're totally defended. So I only take one disdain, amazingly. I didn't use any of my diplomat, which is annoying. Definitely wish I did not pull that in. So the one disdain gets me up to six disdain. And now I have one disdain came through. I had a maximum of three points available. So I just subtract the one from the three and I did two valor. These all come out. Again, the center cards are super depleted. There's a lot of lefts left in the deck. My last path cards are going to be these two. I can get either a pontiff, fill temples, not happening, completed wall sections, much more likely. Although, oh, that symbol's garbage. <laughs> I think it's more important I fill the scout columns. I can fill the one temple. Uh, it is what it is. I think that symbol is way too important for Scout. I can't be pulling 700 things over here. So great. Merchant and Planner. Starting goods. Bam. We got one soldier, three builders, a servant, a civilian, and two stone. We also get another builder and a stone. And then we get six stone because of resource production, two civilians, two builders, 
and I can fill two paths. I'm going to fill the discipline, which gets me a blue, and I'll fill the renown. Definitely could use some more guards. I don't have a great way of getting them. So let me not fill the renown. Let me fill the valor. And by guards, I need more soldiers. I mean, I had other ways of getting valor, but this makes some more sense. So I'm going to spend two stone and a blue to do the statue, which gives me two renown right off the bat. And that's my first landmark. I'm going to spend a civilian to get a renown. It gives me a civilian back. I'm going to spend a civilian to get a stone. I'm going to spend two stone to fill some of the wall. So one, this gives me a renown. And then this gives me a cohort. I'll take the center, which will give me a valor. Let me not do this. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to get a civilian back and do the stone. So I did level nine of the patricians, and you'll see why in a second. Really chasing renown here. I'm going to develop the theater with a servant, a builder, and a stone. So that's a renown. And then I'm going to develop three more levels of the performers. So one. Two gives me a servant. Three gives me a renown. That gives me a civilian. Now that I'm at 15 renown, oh, I should do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do my training with the builder. That gets me up to there, which gives me a discipline. I'm gonna spend two stone and a builder to get the landmark for the archway. That gives me two valor. First valor goes there. Second valor gives me a soldier. I'm gonna do this performance with a stone for year six. So I can do one performance a year. So I'm gonna write year six. That gives me a discipline. The discipline gives me a valor, which gives me a soldier. And that also gives me an appetor, which gives me a discipline. I will spend the civilian to get to stone now. I was thinking I might do the year nine performance. I have two more citizen tracks. They're both builders, however. I'm going to scout on my own thing. Gives me a stone. I'm going to scout using the dummy players. That fills this. It gives me a stone and a servant. Since I fill two more rows, I get two more valor. I'm going to spend a soldier, a servant, and two stone to fill another diplomat. It gives me another valor, which gives me a soldier. I'm going to have this diplomat protect the right. I have scouted my max five times. I'm at 15 valor, so I'm going to spend a blue and two stone to get two piety, a third landmark. One and two. Out of stone. Never did the large precincts. Well, I guess I have four large buildings anyway, so that's fine. I just never did the large temple or the large precinct. I'm at six. So let me look at points, guys. Resource production, I already get two points. Constructed landmarks, I'm gonna get three. Large buildings, I'm going to get two. Completed cohorts, I'm at zero right now. Completed scout columns, I'm at three. And filled temples, I'm at a big fat zero. I wanted this completed wall section. So that was a trade-off. Yeah, I don't need to worry about filling these. I did not take the completed citizens tracks, which I normally do. I also didn't fill this. Try to do some bribes. Six is minus 12 points. It's not great. Really don't have any access to more stone. I think getting the landmarks was more important. Right, I'm going to spend this wall guard to get a cohort. I'm going to fill that in, which gives me a discipline, which gives me a builder. And I'm ultimately one stone shy. Not getting this production up higher is really biting me. One stone, I could do this small temple easy. 
Give me a stone. I need a stone to drop from heaven. I ran out of stone. I could have potentially not developed my last monolith. Nothing else really gave me resources, right? So if I didn't do this monolith, it takes two piety away. And that two piety was the last piety I got. It didn't give me anything. So it gave me two stone and a blue back. I think this is a better call. I'm going to spend the one stone, one builder, and one servant to develop my small temple. That gives me a piety anyway. Then I'm going to spend another builder because builders are pretty useless for me right now. So anything to just fill the temple. And I'm going to spend another builder to fill the second portion of the temple, which gives me another piety. And it gives me another favor and I can use it anywhere. So effectively I have two favors to the left because of the first step met, two favors to the right because the second step met. And now I have one favor anywhere. I'm one stone short from doing the column, which is still better. The point wise for the end game is going to be the same. Stone, however, can get me a civilian. I'm pulling 13 cards. I have 11 defense plus five favors. So I mean, in theory, I could make this happen. It just can't be super heavy, right? 13 cards, I mean, there's a chance you pull seven center, right? But again, I still have that one favor. This is where the core dust can be really helpful. You can turn blues into two servants. It's a really nice late game. And this never got my stone production up where I wanted it to be. But I feel pretty good about what we've accomplished today. Don't think it's going to be the maximum victory, but should be okay. I'm going to spend a yellow to get a builder. I spent two builders to get a yellow using this form. So that's year six. You can dump once a year. I'll spend this yellow to get another builder. I finished the civilian column. Of course, I did not take that for scoring because I got it at the same time I wanted something else. And then I will spend this soldier to develop that. And we're just really just short of doing some other cool things. So this blue I can't use. It's just totally wasted. This is where like the temples are good if you have them develop because you can just kind of throw things away, get some piety. But again, I needed two more stone there. So again, it's all coming back to not doing that resource production just right. And now we're going to finish this sucker off. So we're going to have one extra card. We're pulling a total of 12 plus one, so 13 cards. And we'll see how this works. So one to the right. Don't go right. <laughs> how are there so many right cards in here? There's only 16. One center. Center's good. One left. Ooh, nice and even. So we got 10 more cards to come. One right. Oh, stop it. <laughs> one left. One right. Oh, crazy. I'm going to use my right cohort to ignore that. Yay, diplomat. And what's on the line here right now is four valor, which could be really significant. Another right using my cohort. So I have no more favors from my diplomat, but I do have another favor from the small temple. Another right. <laughs> That's impossible. I got to check. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So we have seen fifteen of the sixteen right cards. So that's eight total. Center is good. Give me more center. Center is good. So that's a total of 10. We're pulling three more. Center is good. We're pulling two more. Left is good. We're pulling one more. Left. Nice. I can use my favor over here. So none got through because of all my favors. That worked out fairly well. And now I get four points on Valor because of that. So one, two, that gives me a discipline. Three and four, that gives me a guard. Done. So I never did any of the bribes. So. Unfortunately, I was not able to minimize the negative points there, but again, I was pretty stone poor. So what's my final score? So we have 15 for the Renown track. We have eight for the Piety track, which is very low, but we do get 19 for the Valor track and we get 20 for the Discipline track. For my path cards, resource reduction is a six, so that's one, two. Constructed landmarks is two, so that's three, four. Large buildings is two, that's five, six. Again, it's two points for having four of them. Completed cohorts is one, so that's seven points. Completed scout columns, I did all five. So that's going to be three more points. So that's 10 points and fill temples. We just filled this one temple. So that's 11 points there. Final disdain total, unfortunately, is minus 12. So my final score is going to be 23, 42, 62, 73, minus 12. Gives me to 61. So I believe that as a perfectus, Castronrum. <laughs> so not the ultimate victory we were hoping for, 
just some things that just didn't come together enough in those last couple of years but it's a cool puzzle it's a cool game very much enjoy it thank you to my friend zach for letting me borrow his copy to get this on the channel definitely recommend it if someone likes the roll and write or flip and write category of games and was looking for something a bit more meaty a little more complicated definitely is prone to some serious ap so i would choose who you play this with very carefully you are very dependent on the right cards coming out at the right time that scout thing really that tetris game was kind of driving a lot of what i was doing here so i wasn't maximizing points there and i wasn't putting things in the alphamal place to get the resources i need because i was like right, i really want to fill that but you know had i been able to do the completed citizens track if i get a separate completed citizens track at landmarks you know that's just an easy three points for me as opposed to fill temple i only got one and completed cohorts i also only got one when you can get all your stone production up and you fill all these out i mean i'm leaving one two three four five cohort defense on the table there Everything is maximized out, right? So you need to do that, 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 and that to fill all your cohorts. Everything is a precise number based on the game, right? The large buildings, there are only six of them. Can you get them all? And there's always like opportunity costs, whatever you're doing, whatever you're leaning into, there are things that you have to avoid. When my servants were coming out, I just ended up really not being able to get the resource production and I never built that large precinct. I was just always one shy from what I wanted. But again, that extra stone production is pretty huge you know, in that final year. Curious to watch this back. I mean, potentially the way the Diplomat ended up working, I probably should have not developed that Diplomat the year I did um, and ended up not helping me. So if I had waited a year on that and I had those resources elsewhere, that would have been interesting. So if I just say, hey, let me risk another year of bad disdain. But again, the way it all came out, I ended up not using them at all because I put the Diplomat on the left and everything came out right in center. It was just something that kind of snowballed on me. Had it worked though, then I get the extra Valor, the Valor gets me extra goodies. You know, there is a little bit of randomness and luck that comes into this game, but it does make the decisions that you're making pretty important and I like it. So that's it. If you want to see what's coming up next on Solo Playthroughs Land, check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description of this video below. There I have a schedule showing you what I am playing in the current month, plus a sneak peek at the month to come. While you're there, if there's a tier of support that makes sense for you, please consider it. I would really appreciate the support. Likes, comments, epiphanies, put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can, as I always do. And until next time, happy gaming.